Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. How many of us still send a Valentine's in the post? Not many. But in Victorian times, it was big. In 1871, there were so many Valentines, 1.2 million, and the postmasters were just inundated with all these Valentines. They were very elaborate back then and very expensive. But have you heard of vinegar Valentines? Valentine's cards in the Victorian era were beautifully made with exquisite designs with cherubs and lace and they were so, so beautifully made. But the vinegar Valentines, this was different. They started to appear in the 1840s and they were supposed to be used by people to give unwanted suitors the heave ho. This one, for example, "'Tis said you share your love with many, but I believe you have not any. At least enough not to give away. You keep it for yourself, they say. Some of them were so vulgar that the postmasters confiscated them. Valentine's Day is a special day. So why am I standing by a beech tree? Well, a hundred years ago, a guy called Vic Stead, who was going off to see his sweetheart in West Yorkshire, walking along the old Collier Railway, he found three saplings from the beach. He made the letter N for his beloved Nelly and it grew into a beautiful tree. It worked, it was successful, they got married and had children. Here is a picture of the lovely Vic and Nelly by the tree. You can see the N shape. It just makes us realise that the commercialism and the lavish gifts of Valentine's today really aren't important. This simplistic gesture by Vic, that's what's important. It's so lovely, so romantic. And even today, couples go there, lovers go by this tree to pop the question. So who is St Valentine? There are several versions of St Valentine. St Valentine of Turney, the Feast of St Valentine's on February the 14th is today known and celebrated around the world. This tradition was spread by the Benedictines, the first guardians of the Basilica, dedicated to the saint in Terni through their monasteries, first in Italy and then in France and England. This is St Valentine's Basilica in Terni, a church dedicated to St Valentine's. He is the protector of lovers and the city. Valentinus is from the Latin valens, meaning to be in good health, was a common name in ancient Roman times, so there are plenty of candidates for the saint. However, the story of St Valentinus, who inspired today's cards and flowers, is connected to a priest or bishop who celebrated marriages between Christian couples at the time of the persecutions. One of the most popular accounts of St Valentine was of a Roman priest and physician who suffered martyrdom during the persecutions of Christians by the Emperor Claudius II. He secretly carried on marrying couples to spare husbands from war because Claudius II preferred unmarried men with no families as they made better soldiers. He was then caught and sentenced to death. While in prison, he fell in love with the daughter of the jailer and when he died on the February the 14th, he said, From your Valentine. Valentine's Day, St Valentine's. We all think of flowers, chocolates and romance. But in the past, it was a lot more sinister. Some of their rituals and customs were quite bizarre, more suited to Halloween. Young girls, unmarried women, would come to the church at midnight, the night before Valentine's Day, and run round the church 12 times, and then 
the ghost of their future husband would appear. It is thought that Valentine's Day derives from the Roman fertility festival Lupercalia, held between the 13th and the 15th. It was to celebrate their fertility god Lupercus and also the Roman founders Romulus and Remus who were cared for and nursed by a she-wolf. The festival was a very raucous affair. Young men would run through the streets half naked or even naked. They would carry bits of animal skin and would try to whip the women they encountered. Women actually wanted to see these men and would go looking for these men. This act would ensure fertility and easy childbirth. Men and women would put their names into an urn. They took it in turns to draw out the names and would be partnered with that person for the whole year till the next festival. The crab apple tree. The Celts believed it was love, fertility and marriage. So many trees are associated with love. The Celts believed that if you took the pips from a crab apple and threw them on the open fire, if they exploded, you'd have a long, happy marriage, or you would soon be wed. Through the ages, birds have played a huge part in Valentine's beliefs. The first bird a single woman saw on Valentine's Day could protect her future husband's character. If she saw a goldfinch, he would be a rich man. If she saw a dove, she would have a happy marriage. But if she saw woodpeckers, she would stay unmarried. The oldest known Valentine still in existence today was a poem written in 1415 by Charles, Duke of Orleans, to his wife while he was imprisoned in the Tower of London, following his capture at the Battle of Argincourt. The greetings is now a part of a manuscript collection in the British Library in London. He was held there for 25 years and wrote many a poem, but this one is very special. The pomegranate tree, another tree of love. It was the first tree planted by Aphrodite in the Greek version and in the Roman version, Venus, both the goddesses of love. And then we have Eros and Cupid. Again, they are to do with love, but they are also both quite naughty and have been known to tease the gods. Throughout history, there has been so many love potions to woo your intended. One that I don't think girls would do today was to crush mealworms with leeks into a potion and eat it. And this would tell you who your lover would be. Or if you wanted to make your existing marriage happier, this would happen. Also, girls would go out and throw petals before their intended came along. So many sweet things and not so sweet things. Nowadays, it's so much easier with the internet and all the modern technology. We don't associate the ball with Valentine's, but maybe we should. They represent love, spring, strength, sexual prowess. The beauty of Europa inspired the love of Zeus. He turned himself into a gracious white bull and carried her off back to Crete. Roses are the most popular flowers to give on Valentine's Day because they represent love from the heart. And as soon as we hear, oh my love is like a red red rose, that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love's like the melody that sweetly played in tune. So fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I. We immediately know Robbie Burns. This is one of the most famous poems to be read. Valentines, weddings, anniversaries. It's so romantic. I hope you've enjoyed this Valentine special and you have a happy Valentine's.